Today we're going to be talking about finding and interpreting the slopes of lines. Now, a line helps to represent, obviously, a linear relationship. What I'm going to do on this coordinate graph is go ahead and make a line. Let's make it something like that. All right. Now, the goal today is to find and interpret slopes of lines. So the slope of a line is basically represented as the vertical change over the horizontal change. So the vertical change is the amount it increases from one area to the next on the y-axis over the horizontal change, the amount it increases from one area to the next on the x-axis. So if I was to take a little snippet of the line over here, what I'm going to do now is focus on that vertical change. Another term for the vertical change over the horizontal change is rise over run. So back on the vertical change, I could see it increases 1, 2, 3 units. So I have a vertical change of 3 units, or I have a rise of 3 units over a run of 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So the slope of this line would be 3 fourths. Another term you're going to be familiar with is delta y over delta x, which really stands for the change in y over the change in x. All three of these mean exactly the same thing. Now, there are different kinds of slopes. Um, the first kind of slope we're going to talk about is a positive slope. Now, in a positive slope, both the value of the run and the value of the rise are indicated by positive numbers. So in this case, you have a positive divided by a positive, and that's going to leave you with a positive value. Also, if you look at the uh, rise over run from a different perspective, if we're going backwards and then down, you could also see that as a negative rise and a negative run, but a negative divided by a negative also gets you a positive. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a negative slope. In this case, from one point to the next, as far as vertical change goes, I have a positive rise because I am going up on the y-axis. However, in terms of the x-axis, I end up with a negative run. So I have a positive divided by a negative, and that's going to get me a negative slope. Again, if I look at it from the other direction, I am going down this time on the y-axis, so I have a negative value. But I am going from left to right on the x-axis, and that gets me a positive value. So in this case, my rise is negative, and my run is positive, but that's still a negative divided by a positive, and that's going to get me a negative slope. So one way to think about it, I guess, if it works for you, is walking up the stairs. Do -do -do, here you are, you're happy, you're walking up the stairs, and then you're sliding down. So positive and negative slope. Two other slopes, two other situations you need to think about are zero slopes versus undefined slopes. So in this case, I'm taking a look at my slopes and I see that I have a horizontal line. Now the reason I have a horizontal line is if I'm taking a look at the idea of rise over run, 
in this case, I have no rise. There's zero rise. Now my run, my run can't really be defined because it just kind of keeps going if we imagine that the lines increase. Whatever that value is, it's an indefinite value, if you want. An infinite value, sure. Then we're going to take 0 divided by that value, and it's still going to end up as 0. So this ends up being a 0 slope. What about my vertical line? Well, in terms of rise over run, if we think back then, um, let's take a look at our rise. I don't know what that rise is. It's going to keep going on forever. So that's going to be some sort of infinite value. But then if I take a look at the run, there is no movement whatsoever along the horizontal axis. So that's going to be zero. And as we know, you cannot divide by zero. You just can't. Try it on your calculator. We've done it before. Um, and that is what's going to get you an undefined slope. So four different examples. Um, positive slopes, negative slopes, we're going to be dealing with these quite a bit. And zero slopes, undefined slopes, you won't see them that often, but you do need to be aware that they exist. Now, at the very start, we talked about the slope as the vertical change over the horizontal change, or the rise over the run, or delta y over delta x. This leads us to our slope formula which is, again, if we're talking about the change in y over the change in x. Now, in this case, um, the idea here is that I don't want to, when looking at a graph, I don't want to have to keep on counting the different squares in order to get a rise or to get a run. Or, more importantly, when I'm not given a graph, but rather two separate values. I don't want to draw these points out and then create a line and then count the, the points. It gets a little tedious that way. So there is a slope formula so that I could find the slope of a line passing through the points 4 comma 8, positive 4 and positive 8, and positive 1, positive 4. So really, I start out with my formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x sub 1. And then I input the points. So if I'm taking a look at my two points, this is going to be my x1 point. This is going to be my y1 point. This is going to be my x2. And this is going to be my y sub 2. So then what I can go ahead and do is plug in those values. And I have 4 minus 8 over 1 minus 4. So 4 minus 8 is a negative 4. 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. So my slope is a positive 4 thirds. Now here's an interesting question. What if instead of x sub 1, x sub 2, I change the coordinates so that this was x1 and y1, and this was x2, y2. What's going to happen to my answer? Well, if we start out again, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, what we'll see is that I have 8 minus 4 over 4 minus 1. And that's going to get me a positive 4 over 3, which still gets the same answer. So regardless of which uh, is your 1 coordinate and which is your 2 coordinate, you're still going to get the same answer. And that is how you use the slope formula. That's all.